so he can have that kind of power play. Yeah, it really throws a wrench into like the whole kind of concept when I think about Empire. Because mm -hmm. I'd be like, okay, I'm thinking of Chappie heroes now, and I'm like, oh, PA. Yeah. <laughs> sure, yeah, you just every PA, time, every PA, time, PA, every time. PA. No matter what it's first, it would be PA. I'd love to see a Rezo PA, bud. Where are we going to get it? The Drow Band, now that, that certainly is a smart one. You've I got like a that. Nature's Prophet, you've got a Puck, would be brilliant for the lanes. Synergize as well with the push. Silence is going to be very strong against all of Infamous's heroes. So, yep. yeah, smart ban there with the Drow. Yeah, as we said, just kind of thinking of Rezo heroes that are left. Lycan. Lycan, but doesn't really do much with the Shadow Demon, but you think maybe they're not necessarily just going to go full in for an illusion push. There's other reasons why Team Empire like to play the STG, I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I don't think it's just for the illusions. No. I think it's for the, the dual realm as well, but yeah. with Lycan, it gives them really strong fight with the Puck ulti, because then they actually have the grab, and then Nature's Prophet as well with the Howl, with this Treant, so you can actually bully the safe lane quite hard. Possibility that they're looking for. It gives them that kind of like Death Ball 2 thing with the Nature's Prophet. And Lena and Venomancer, those two heroes, they have protection right now from Tusk and Shadow Summon in a way, but sure. a like a Lycan running at a Lena and a Veno, that's pretty terrifying. Both these heroes don't have these their own like ways to get away from him and peel away. Final ban from Empire looking to target that that off lane pick. As we'd assume from him. And uh, well she, they're gonna look elsewhere. We we have obviously seen earlier today teams run the offlane Venner. Maybe that's yes. something that more teams feel that other teams are opening themselves up the opportunity to do so and potentially Empire were looking at this saying this could be a mid Venner uh, sorry, off lane Venno, mid Lena and they're still looking for that safe lane. So yeah, the CK ban. That's certainly an interesting one. Maybe it's it we're gonna see this final pick and go right, that's why they don't wanna play it against the CK, but here we go. What what is Rezo going to take? I think Tower Blade and were pretty good. It was yeah. pretty good such uh, recommendations we had. I still think that the morphing as well as you mentioned. That's yeah. definitely something that the, 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 the chance of seeing. But it's actually oh, okay. the Weaver. So uh, that that I'll be honest, that surprises that me a little bit. That one is very surprising, especially to Shadow Shaman. Hey, I mean, especially to a, a fair few of these heroes. I yeah. feel you know b before he gets that Lincoln, you know, Lena is a definite threat. Venno certainly makes it annoying for him. Now there's a shaker too. All right, so what is going on from Infamous? It is going to be what? Benja what? safe lane off lane shaker. Off lane shaker. Okay, so that but that that makes Boy more standard. sense. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, Weaver being the final pick, interesting closer from Empire. And I, I mean, we saw that there was no hesitation with that shaker pickup. I think they were probably going to do it anyway, but they saw the Weaver and they were even more like, we're definitely going to pick the shaker, having that extra stun and lockdown. It feels like this is. It, it's going to be a very dangerous game for, for the Weaver. I guess he has some sort of save in the fact that they do have that Shadow Demon with the disruption. Yeah. Gives him the chance to maybe get off a time lapse, but it could be a tricky one for Reza. Because I, I got, I've got to be honest, I'm liking what Infamous are doing. This is I, a team that's I'm, taken down a secret. They, they could, they could certainly do this. I'm looking at it. and I'm like, I actually like, I like Infamous's a lot. I look at Empires. I, I like theirs a bit too. It's just the, yeah. I'm, I don't know. Shadow Demon is the one hero that kind of like is weird. You have to have pretty good success on your rotations early in order to just become like stay relevant. It's, I, I, it's, it's always just this hero as well that I feel in the laning stage, you know, or in the mid game. If he gets caught out by a Gale or a Slow, he's gonna just disrupt himself, come out of the disruption, and then die. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's going to be very hard for, for him to find his position. But it is Maposhka, and we've seen great stuff from Maposhka in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's been an um for quite a while actually, hasn't he? Remember back at what ESL, ESL, ESL Manila, when they, they were playing really well, Empire and. They at least had a few of these players still in the lineup. They, they had Maposhka and FN, maybe? It was, it was only a couple of the ones still on it, but Maposhka's certainly been with them for a while. Well, let's see. It was a bit different. Yeah, but it was, it was close. There we go. So, game one, as you said, and then I feel that it, it seems that Infamous have the safer draft. But I guess, on the other hand of it all, if Resolution does, you know, get ahead, Get to the late game. He can get out of control. Yeah, and, 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 control. and infamous themselves, they don't really have the scaling potential that a Weaver does, in terms of the cores they have. Yeah, they've got great like low cooldown fighting abilities from Infamous. Or kind of does too. Uh, this is going to be a hell of a game. This should be some good battle. It's, it's going to be a lot of battle. And that's the thing. You're looking at these these heroes, and there's no hero in this game that is just going to be AFK farming the map. Maybe the Nature's Prophet to an extent will be, be you know keeping himself out of the action, but everyone else. You pick these heroes, 
as you say, to pop your skills, oh. to get involved and look for some action. Looks like we have an aggressive play coming on. They're gonna, so they're going aggro trialing and putting nature's profit in a one versus one versus the earth shaker. That's, I, like I guess, that. the plan that they're going for. That makes a lot more sense. They might even get something out of this. We'll see if they they're able to get a catch. They know I mean, he has ice shards. prepared, yeah. No, I shared their skill. And here we go. They're going to look to lead in. There's the disruption into the torrent. Just looking to focus down the easier kill, but in fact, they're turning him with the burst. Maposhka, he's falling low. They do still get the first, but but they'll lose Maposhka in return. We'll see if they can get anything out else out of this. It's a one for one at the moment. Rezo having to back up a little bit as he's getting right click down. Now turning. Shards are thrown out by Matthew. Roger just uh, actually manning up against the two of them here. Fairly tanky on the Kunker as he comes in. Like, oh, he got about 700 HP for armor. Not bad at all on the Kunker. So it enables him to trade those blows, and uh, one for one. So th by the end of the day, Empire do indeed get themselves that first blood. And yep. as you say, these these are the lanes. So this aggressive tri lane, going head to head with Infamous. Uh, does that surprise you? I mean, it's a hard tri lane to go against. It's quite strong, but what Infamous have surely, isn't it? They, it's they can it's fight. decently strong. They have to just watch if they get caught on the sides. Because once uh, Weaver hits level two, it's when the bugs come out. That's where it becomes a lot harder for them. Uh, the same kind of thing when Ma when Matthew gets snowball. Yeah. Because then you actually have the able to when someone gets disrupted and they're getting initiated, you just snowball and you change the entire initiation coming out. Roger is actually going to be the one who's a bit isolated here now on the side. He's going to get blocked off from his mates here with a shard Gale. It does connect. They are going in for the for the beatdown. Axel has got the nuke up in a couple of seconds. So just the level one though, and it is just a case of trading, trading so, hits. So this should benefit Empire probably a bit, a good amount more, just because they're running an aggro trialing. They have a Nature's Prophet, the melee hero, yeah, and he can come join top if he does see those very good opportunities for him to go. Even in the, even potentially in the mid lane too. When Sepen hits six, we could see a TP from the Nature's Prophet, or even before that. So, I, I really like the lane setup coming up. Even though I did, I guess I did a like impact misses myself a little bit. So the bugs now are ready to be used by Rezo if they do see an opportunity. They find Ben Jess, they have the torn as well. And there goes the combo. So catcher upon him. We'll see if Infamous can do anything to turn and lay down the gale onto Roger. But Super Ben Jess falling low and he's out. They will find the kill in return if they take down Roger. But it looks like Empire are going to find the favorable trade as they don't just get one. They get themselves two. Double kill for Rezo. And indeed, as you mentioned it, this is looking very hot for Empire. Yeah. Starting the game, getting a double kill on your Weaver. Rezo's finding the farm as well. They got level 2 on Empire before Infamous did, so the Snowball was not ready for Matthew to try to go for those saves just yet. And look at this, straight away, Rogers back in, goes to the mid lane, sets up for a gank, and finds the kill with FN as they take down Tomato. Was already suffering a bit in that mid lane. 11-7 on FN and 7-1 and on Tomato. Look at this, I don't think Rogers done. He's, he's got a haste rune. He's, he's waltzed about. Miposka does have the disruption set up. And uh, here we go. They're going to lay it down with the Soul Catcher. Nice juke snowball. though with the Snowball. In fact, they may be able to turn this. They close the gap onto Meposhka. Throw down the nuke from Axel. We'll see if they can finish it. They should get the Shadow Demon. X Mark is there to hold back. Oh, he's trying. No! Oh, he's, he's tried his best. They tried to duke it out high behind the tree line. But Meposhka will still end up going down. So, well, yep. three minutes in. It's, it's pretty much as we expected. A lot of action up and down the map. Yeah, the battling. But Empire coming out. Super far ahead in this just because I mean they have the winning matchups. Yeah, look at look at these CSs. Lane. Look at these last hits on the moment. Really does show the story of these lanes. This bottom lane, the absolute dream for Ghost Tick. I mean, we, we expect the Nature's Prophet to do well in this one v one, but I, I don't know if it's necessarily meant to do this well. This is just Ghost Tick playing perfectly in CS. Twenty and sixteen against the seven for zero. That, that's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, I, it's it's kind of the nature of the matchup. It's a, it's an impossible matchup for a shaker. I guess so. I mean, it, it really seems that. The boots plus treants, I mean, it's it's way too much damage to be able to do anything. And even when over Venom, I'm ghosting. Yeah. Matchup is very, very hard. Lane. 21 for 8 against Tomato, 17 for 2. So, again, another lane where the lead is there in farm. And uh, top lane, of course, as well. It's looking pretty damn awful for Benjaz. Yeah, Benjaz has he is CS struggling. To 21 on the Weaver. I didn't think it was. I didn't think. It, I don't think it should be that bad either. To be quite that, honest with you. Th th I mean, that is quite a difference. That is. It's not great. No, that's. He's got. He's yeah. They have to play from the lane. You know.
know what I mean. Like, uh, the two supports need to be playing behind the Phenomancer. They can't be playing on the sidelines too much because that's how they get caught out if the tri lane is there. But now there's only two heroes, they can start contesting. Mid lane tomato. Up again, looking for the setup. They have the X mark. There will be a TP rotation from Matthew. And that will put off Empire from going in for more. Immediate movement from Roger. He says, all right, we forced the rotation down there. Let's go see if we can find something up top. We've already got Miposhki getting eyes onto Banjaz, who's had to back up into the jungle. He's jungling at five... At, actually, it's almost five minutes already. He's jungling at level three. Miposhki might be in a bit of trouble. We'll get the Soul Catcher onto two. Again, the Snowball to dodge the Torrent. For Rezo, he's coming across. He's ready for the fight. Throws out the bugs. Catches them onto two. Miposhki is trapped in and will go down. But Empire, they're ready to turn. They've found Raw one. They've got Ghostic coming in with a TP. Looking towards Benjaz. Queen Tekka and Tomato are there though, and they will stun up Ghost Dick, take him down. Benjaz will survive for now. The Treants trying to chase him down and finish it off, but just in time, Infamous will clean the Treants up. Benjaz will be saved. So, uh, nice to, at the end of the day, better reaction from Infamous. Uh, you saw Empire sending in heroes, but unfortunately for Ghost Dick, he didn't quite get the kill. Ends up losing his life. Rezo's still there to play around with it though. He's looking at Benjaz. Tomato is in the neighborhood. We'll see how greedy he can go. FN is coming across and does have the Dream Coil. Beautifully lays it down, catches the two of them. Light Strike from Tomato will hold Resolution back for the timing, but he's got the bugs back up. The Nature's Wrath flies through. Tomato falling low. The Stick Charge, is it going to be enough to save him? He will get the stun out, but he can't walk himself away. Resolution picks up the kill. Matthew in trouble as Rezo's coming across to join the rest of his team. FN will go down, but this time it really is Empire cleaning up. Excel, he's going to try for the Ancient Deny, but it's not going to happen. Torrent from Roger sends those Ancients up to to the skies and Rezo picks up the double kill and top lane now as well oh King man looks yeah. like he's getting dove Rezo, Rezo will take Dose. this he, is, he wants in on the action and he is certainly going to get in on it in go the bugs Queen Tekka trying to buy as much time as he can waste uh, waste that of, of empires but it's not going to work resolution six and a half minutes in six zero four on the weaver not looking to slow down 11 for six these lanes well and truly in entirely falling apart for infamous as this is it's got to be one of the the laning stages where I've seen such a difference between the two sides. Empire are just so far ahead. Yeah, they're steamrolling it. They're literally yeah. just making their moves happen kind of naturally. It's they're not really like planning a big move like a small rotation. It's just kind of like flowing and kill into kill into kill. Now they're able to press your top tower as well. And how much a Rezo just walking around with 1800 in the bank? He's yet to spend it. Yeah, gotta buy for what full treads. Uh, they've nearly got tier one in the middle as well, so this is gonna be a couple of tier ones going down soon. They'll, they'll go for the roll in attempt it, but oh, they, 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 what the hell? they do get him there after the phase shift, but he still had the time to jump to that orb. That a a little close. I thought they should get the shackles instantly. They had a hex for 1.25 seconds, they didn't stun him. They didn't use the shackle right away. I think that was a bit of a misplay by Excel. I'm missing a kill there. I mean, it looked weird. Maybe just didn't expect to hit the hex or something. I think, I think that's what it was. Yeah, he was like, oh, I, I got the hex. And yeah. didn't quite react, as you say, in time to follow up. But yeah, top tower goes down. Mid lane to fall as well. There's more money going the way of Empire as they sit 5k gold lead very early on as we yet to hit the 8 minute mark. And the thing that's devastating too is like, I, I liked Infamous' draft because mm -hmm. they had a very fast tempo kind of lineup that could definitely snowball the lanes. But the fact that they haven't with these kind of heroes, like we kind of look at it and you, you look at these five heroes and you could say that all five of these could be ran in a support role in a way. It, it's I the mean, five support strap. It's kind of like that. Like Venol is a little bit different now because of how much he's been changing in the way he's played. And the same thing with like Lina too, but just looking at the nature of it, like straight up just looking at their draft, you, that's what you could kind of visualize. So they needed to do really well in the lanes and the fact that they haven't is a massive hit. Look at this, Ghost Stick's ready to cut behind this top tier two and look for some action. He's found Matthew. He'll buy himself some time with the snowball, but he's got he's got no backup coming in. The team's just leaving him for dead as he is taken down. Empire to pick up another kill, continue the pressure on this tier two. Bottom lane at the same time, you have FN and Maposhka looking for kills on their lonesome. They'll burst down another. Ghostic picking up the double kill as the, the nature's wrath flies through. It's really starting to fall this apart. is, I mean, I, I really felt as well, I like the draft of Infamous, but it, it just seems that maybe I just underestimated how how well Empire can use this Shadow Demon Kunkka. It's been ca causing a lot of havoc. That, you know, paired with this Resolution Weaver, it, it's been ridiculous. Yeah. It's running away with the game. I mean, it's also when you're looking at, when we're talking directly about draft, we're looking at lanes. And Empire yeah, we didn't expect this. It. They ran yeah. the aggro, and that always changes everything that can happen in the game, especially if it goes as successful as it did for them. How is Ben just doing? Still not recovered. Level 7, though. Max wards at least fine, but...
Everybody That's else crazy. is suffering to level six Lena. It's. I mean, I. I won't be surprised if I've, I'm surprised I've not seen that matchup that much. You know, where you, you see that there's going to be a shaker offline. You just get this nature's profit. I'm sure. I'm sure we're going to see teams try and get that matchup again because it. It just seems so ridiculously good. If yeah. you have a strong nature's profit player. As we just saw, he will absolutely destroy that Earthshaker in a 1v1. Similar with a lot of like those ranged heroes, right? Like Venno, Necrophos, sure, and yeah. Nature's Prophet, those big like, safe lanes that you can just kind of ditch, they do super well versus those melee heroes. And yeah, I don't I don't really see how um I don't really see how infamous really take fights unless they're pretty much sitting behind people and Empire kinda just dives into them. Or it's just like support kills. Maybe like this bottom, they could maybe find like the two support tier. Fighting into Empire seems Really they're, they're trying it. They may get Maposhka. He has been left behind, but with four members of Infamous moving in on him, that'll be a kill. It's something. It, it is. It's some. You know, a small kill. It's the five hero, and the fact that you're getting 275 gold when you have four heroes showing up for definitely is a bit of a scare factor. And I mean, Empire didn't respond at all either. They don't give a crap. They're pushing top. They're pushing mid. Farming all the lanes. Pressure. Well, yeah, and then they got a veil on FN. Rezo, as you say, just getting space. He's basically already got, you know, 10, 11 minutes in. Dragon Lance, Aquila, Blightstone, Trez, Full Wand. He's, he's working his way towards that defusal. Hey, he is on track to be an absolute nightmare. Not ready on this Weaver. 6k gold net worth overall for himself pretty soon. His Empire, at the moment, in terms of net worth, literally an entire hero ahead of that of Infamous. Is Yeah, 7k gold lead. Losing pop your safe lane tier 2. You almost lost your mid tier 2 as well. You have lost so many ways to actually... So many ways that you want to be able to farm and recover on a map. You actually just don't have that option right now at this point. And Empire is going to continue the aggression. With getting the 6s and even higher levels on their supports. And going to be forcing the towers. So yeah. See if Infamous can actually make some type of smoke play and try to go for a fight behind this tower, preemptively, back to where Empire's gonna run. I mean, that, that, that is the thing, you know, Infamous, they do have this team fight, they do have relatively good D-push between their heroes, a lot of wave clear, but uh, with the, the Empire have, these fights are very hard for them to take. I do smoke up, but Infamous, they, they've got the favorable position here on the high ground. Time there is this ward, of course, from Empire, giving the intel of Avengers farming up the Ancients. Yeah, they even catch a glimpse of the Shadow Shaman up on the high ground too. So they did know. And I mean, their smoke broke, so they knew people were there anyway. Top lane, King Tekka looking to set up onto Rezo, but... I think Rezo just turns and kills him. Yeah, especially with the Maposhka coming in. He'll try for the TP out. He's not going to make it, of course, with Disruption. Still at Maposhka's availability. Resolution finding, with the help of his friends, a setup for another kill. There's a smoke up from Infamous as they wrap Brand down towards bottom. They may get Ghost Stick, looking for the large trap, but the stun is not going to connect. The Snowball will, though, comes in, finds him. Uh -oh. They'll drop everything, but there's the combo in return. Roger with the torrent into the boat. They've taken down one. They will lose Ghost Stick, but this should be a big cleanup for Empire. Resolution to chase down the Tusk. You've got Tomato being surrounded in the tree line. Will land the light strike. Maybe had to bring down the Poshka with a no. The defensive disruptions there. Triple kill for Resolution as he now sits 10-0-5. 13 minutes in. This game Bates is... Has my... Oh my okay, goodness. Look, you should be able to find these lines. Might be able to get gone on by a fan, but with full rain drop charges. I mean, Reza, Reza's pretty much got a defusal blade as well. 13 minutes. It's 13. Yeah, yeah, this is looking almost irrecoverable, right? They're not getting. They're not able to just get together, and their team fight versus Empires is just super lacking right now. I mean, we saw with the bands, Infamous, obviously playing with Reza in mind, trying to take away his heroes, but this Weaver pick, it's. I feel that's not something we see a lot from Resolution, but this game, he's, he's absolutely acing it. Yeah, the choice of the Weaver last pick going yeah. into that aggro tri lane, it's, it's literally like everything that's working for them. Now they have four bottoms set up, while Puff tops with it. Some reaction out of there. It kind of begs the question as well, I wonder if this was the plan all along from Empire. We obviously saw that Drow and felt it was good. Maybe they never wanted it anyway. They, they wanted to pick up Rezo's. Weaver and, well, they're going to get another one here. Axel caught out by the X-Mark into the Torrent. Resolution, of course, the one to claim another. He is going to have some pretty fat stats on the board after this game at this rate. I mean, he can actually just farm the 
Oh, you're pushing Venom Lords to guard the tower? Thanks. <laughs> I tell you what, it's, it's a shame there's not a Rezo card in the Fantasy. I'm not sure if they've done it so you get the points if you've got Chappie's card, but if there was a Rezo card, this you'd be, be making bank this game. Yeah, this is a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Goodness. 16 out of 18 kill participation. I mean, the, the kills naturally have come to him a bit. Sure, I mean, it has been, you know, his team, certainly, you know, Maposhka. Maposhka and Roger doing a lot with the setup. And uh, may even find more here as they come deep. Find the, the disruption. We're actually going to see a snowball forward jump up to the high ground, Tomato, to deal with the illusion. And now, with the, the ultimate set down, the demonic purge, setting up again for more blood being spilt in favor of Empire. Infamous now, just I think they have to just wait for their Shaker Blink Dagger before they even try to make anything. Go they are, it. and they are close to that to be fair. They, they have yeah. managed to get in the space, yeah. Get the Blink Dagger and then go for a big smoke play and try to pick off those heavy networks. Go blow up, blow everything on Red Zone, honestly. I think that's probably the play here. So you can get like a vision and you just five men smoke or men smoke and just try to kill him and get that godlike streak because it's, it's looking really bad. Right now. And time is running out in the sense that, well, I mean, once Rezo has that BKB, there, there's definitely no way he's done. Yeah. They they have very little, I mean, if anything, really. I mean, what is it? Is it still what the initial, like, one bit of damage goes through BKB with the Echo Slam? I remember it used to be, didn't it? Yeah, it has, like, that mixed. It's a little bit of damage, but it's... Or did they change that? I can't remember. Either, either way, whatever the damage is that goes through, but it's, you know, just, it's not... It's not to, enough yeah. to do anything about this Weaver. It's pretty much nothing else to pierce it. I guess they could still give him a bit of a wallop with the Walrus Punch, but that, that's not going to kill him. Yeah. He's always going to be able to get away once that BKB's out, and it's, it's going to be on track to, to uh, I imagine, be there before the 20-minute mark at this rate. Yeah. Infamous has a very heavy uh, objective-taking issue and just physical damage issue. They are pretty much all physical except for Shadow Shaman Ward. Or all magical except for Shadow Shaman Ward. FM ready to set up. He's, he's found himself in this room. Infamous. No idea about this. It will only drop the Dream Coil onto one though. Oh, he and puts it goes into, into the light strike. Oh no, Empire! What is that? Tomato? That is not the play. Tomato just gets it handed to him. Oh, neutral. a neutral creep yep. does deny the bigger kill on FN. So that's a little painful. Maybe Infamous can find more out of this though. They'll come in with the punch onto Roger, blocked up by a Fisher. They do get that one. So Infamous picking up. We'll say two and a half. It's, it's worth a half kill in, in terms of just having him off the map, that puck, but definitely a little, little infuriating that they didn't get the kill and the, the neutral yeah. creep did get the deny. Still a sick play but by Tomato, the, yeah, you know, predict preparing. the predict stun on top of himself to hope John comes out. FN with a bit of a mistake, of course, but that was... It was their blink reveal on their shaker, but it wasn't really their blink reveal because he didn't have to use any spells. So he's still got Echo Slam ready in all lines. Top lane. I think Rezo can get away with this solo, can't he? Very, very easily. With that Diffusal Blade, the damage he does. Pretty Three. impossible to stop. Very few heroes on this side of Infamous can react to that in a way that yep. they can turn it with how big Rezo is. Massive amount of damage. And like yeah, you said, building toward that BKB very soon. Now it's going to look towards Rush. I mean, with an Anxious Prophet, it's a very safe take. And by the looks of it, with the bugs out, more than enough damage to do this. 20 seconds still without that Lena. Yeah, the beauty of Nature's Prophet. And especially with Weaver. Like, uh, the Weaver bug oh, doesn't wait. actually die. To this because the Nature's Prophet streams are tanking. Uh, they can't, can they get in time for the Blink Echo? I don't... I don't think they... I, I mean, if they go straight over, they could. Yeah, the Queen Tech is make. there. Can he get the jump in in time? No, he's being held outside the pit. They've got the Dream Call onto two. The boat flies in. Nature's Wrath bringing them down low. They managed to nuke down Axel on the Shaman. Miposhka, he's got to go for the TP out. Can he make it? By the looks of it, he can. The Torrent holds back Tusk. And indeed, Empire easily able to secure the area around that Roshan pit. Infamous unable to find that jump that they required. Rezo has the Aegis. He's ready to push high ground. The rest of his team's ready to go. Infamous. One of the pluses, of course, being in this situation, they're going to be back up for the defense with those low, low death timers. <laughs> yeah, well, they're so level, so low level, so it's that's it's not the kind of good news you want to be in the position of receiving. No, definitely not. There's a 13k gold lead for Empire. Rezo about 600 gold away from having that completed BKB, so indeed looking to be around that 20 minute mark as expected. Yeah, look at this game so far. And they're just playing on the full aggression. They're completely just sitting on the enemy side of the map. Their towers are all super healthy. Their tier 1s actually have barely been touched. Only the bottom tier 1 got hit. About, most of them, about a thousand damage on that tier. 
yeah, they have all the liberty in the world to just farm super aggressively and keep Infamous kind of in their base and play the Starvation game for a bit. Get a pick off before they want to play the full Siege high ground. Or maybe even just take out that tier 2. They do still have that one, though. Vampire get caught out of position. An echo could be pretty tasty. Yep. They... I mean, what, other than the BKB, there's... There's no sort of kind of hood or, or mech yet. Uh, they're, yeah. they're nearly a mech yeah. on, on uh, Roger. Yeah. Now, right now, they can maybe get yeah. caught off guard and get big echo, but it's, their positioning shouldn't be compromised like that, especially with Aegis. Like, there's no point in anyone True. being next to the Weaver. And especially with Nature's Prophet, you're just going to push the side lane in. Afterwards, Nagin next. I oh! <laughs> a little cheeky play there. As uh, Tekka was going for a TP out, and uh, well, revealing obviously they had the ward there. You see, uh, FN just goes in with Dream Call, says no TP for you, sir, today. Uh -huh. And for the side, let's get this Roger trying to set it up. There will be the defensive Yules. Nice play from Tomato there. A uh, obviously a very strong item to pick up against this sort of play that the Kunkas going to look for. We'll keep the Lena safe. Oh, I was a bit concerned in case like Rezo may be running up and just defusing the Yules, but oh, he could have to be fair. I guess he yeah. didn't know that the Yules was there yet. So now True. the next time around, if yeah. they do do an X combo, very likely it'll get first off. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, they, they do have that answer for it. Yeah, and that's the BKB now out and done for Rezo. It's 20 minutes. We got three items. 12k net worth on a Weaver. 20 minutes. The Shadow Fiend is something you can. Kind of understanding it's like 10,000 net worth, but 12,000 on a Weaver in 20. Woo! I mean, the towers help, of course, but been having a spectacular game. 6, 19 kills. Looks like there's very little infamous can do to stop this tier 2 from going now. Ground is stood. Tomato will juke out the torrent. Tries to clean out the wave, but the tower's already gone. More money into the bank of Reza. Question of what he goes for next. Top lane. See Empire trying to get themselves stuck in. Ghost Dick TP's across. Demonic Purge. And there now the Orchid reveal from Ghost Dick comes out. There will be the save for the time being by the, the Tusk as, as he comes through. Matthew with the snowball. Buying some time for Tekka to actually get the blink out and the TP away. Matthew himself going for the TP. Won't quite make it though, unfortunately, for himself as FN does turn up, drops the coil. But um, a, a neat little save and escape there, allowing Tekka to get back to base. Very nicely done. Needs to need to protect their cores. There it's it's fifteen thousand. Still for Empire, it's only twenty two minutes. They're still gotta have a lot of damage control to do. Ben Benjaz is just I mean the road to recovery is quite a few miles away. Especially with the lack of levels. I mean, he's got that thirty percent XP game, but we're we're still yet to really feel it. In comparison to where he is in terms of getting uh, in highest cause Rezo three levels ahead. Already well on the way to his next time, whatever that, whatever that may be. I mean, he's still got the Blightstone. I mean, he, he, he could just go back for, like, the, the Desso, couldn't he? Hey, maybe. Maybe he just wants or bigger stuff, but... Bigger, yeah. Maybe. Still, he's still waiting and deciding what he wants. FN going for the Dagon build. So it's going to be able to... He's playing versus super underleveled heroes, and not only just super... Playing versus a pretty squishy lineup. Veil with Dagon, he can definitely go for those kind of picks. You hear it that time, the Dire scanning? I keep missing it. You keep you missing it? They get the scan. <laughs> yeah, they know someone's there. FN, can you get out of this one? Yes, oh, he can. The He's a puck. He's gone. The infamous won't, won't get this move. Yeah, they're in serious trouble. The Empire now splitting themselves up all over the map. Possible. They've got the mech finished up. Going to be building the hook hood next on Kunkka. And Aegis is gone. They're just, just trying to farm and keep the pressure on Infamous as much as possible. They're definitely not like in the needing to force anything. That's the beauty. It's like Empire's like, whatever. They can come to us. They can take fights on us. But we don't need to force any kind of issue. Take a team fight. We'll wipe them. Then we'll siege. I want to see Rezo get a rape here. He's not doing that. He's getting Scardy. No balls. No, he's going Deso. Oh, he's going Desso. He's okay. He had to scout in there. Can you go to Desso? I, I was going to say, I think the, the options that he had were more than likely the, the Desso or the Scotty. Because Scotty okay. very good versus all the burst from Infamous, and then that's what good for the ending. I mean, I think, mate, it looks like you haven't died yet. You've you've got this Kunkra on the road to getting a pipe. Yeah. And you got a BKB. It's just 
Sc I would have been disappointed in Scarlet. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. that's was good. Uh, like Rapier would have been like that. That's the play because you, you've not died. Come on, Rezo, have a bit, have a bit of confidence in this. Like the Lincolns or Scotties were the, those are the very safe move sure, maneuvers, yeah. but the Desos gives them the potential to not only siege but kill Roche faster. And these everyone on the side of Infamous is so squishy. These guys have like zero armor. That's what will be very, very the Veno who has any. I shall uh, interesting pick up from the tech eight, going for that Yules after the blink. Yeah. Just to make sure that he's got ways to play around. Well, obviously the one that screams out is that, that Orchid on Ghost Stick. Ghost Stick himself, very close to having a BKB. Just needs to finish off that recipe and that'll be out and down. Yeah, they got a couple couple items picked up from Infamous, the Shadow Blade 2 on the Lina. And get that look into the back lines. So, oh, you can just split push and not be as worried about like, the pickoff potential because you can Shadow Blade away unless they have dust. Getting heavily, heavily out farmed in Not really seeing a way for them to. I mean, they may have a way to get try to get back into it, but the thing is that their, their heroes don't scale into it. After this oh, yeah, such a commanding this. defeat in the yeah. early game and mid game, it's. I mean, that's that's kind of what we said at the start, wasn't it? It was like if, if Rezo has a an amazing game, he is easily going to be able to out carry any any of the heroes that Infamous has in their lineup, and it's uh, it's pretty much been what's happened yeah. at the moment. You know, he he has had. You know, nothing less than an absolutely insane game. It was a 25 minutes in. There's the Deso added to his armory. Okay, now we're level 18 already. Watch get this. We'll get taken down. They so do they, they do get a, a yeah a pick at, at least. Something. It's only not necessarily the, the big kill they have, but they'll certainly take whatever they can get at this stage. The lead that Empire have. Rezo just, again, just being granted the space to sit up top, keep that pressure on, and having to force Infamous Excel to react. really wants to be able to use his... <laughs> not getting the chances. He's trying to right now, though. He's making his venture. Could cost him his life. Might actually do some. Drop him anyway, but now he sees Nature's Prophet. Maybe he'll just wait for the Nature's Prophet to leave, and he'll just try back to and get a TPing out. See. The catapult's gonna get it into deny though. It's in deny range. No, I think Excel's gonna go for the tower. Is he gonna do it? Come he, on, Excel. I'm pretty sure he's yeah, gonna do it. Surely. If he just TPs out, I'm gonna be disappointed now. I, I, I'm, go on. I'm, I think he's doing it. Waiting. Right. Does he, I mean, does he even need One to drop the wards? Wave. Could he not just man up and punch I mean, he could, it? Man right. up and punch it. You don't oh, need no he's, wards. He's gonna do it. You're a strong, independent shadow shaman. He's already. Oh, he's going in. Drop he don't it. need wards. Drop the wards. Just put, don't drop the wards. Drop the wards. Oh, yeah. good stuff. Disappointment all round. Oh, come on. He, we got what we wanted. He's gonna get the he's tower. He's gonna get the tower. Nice. And he might get. He'll get a couple of waves out of it. Well, at least one wave one. Hey, he'll get. There you go. That nice little infamous raising the spirits there. We got a tower. Lay down those vocal sounds. There we go. Wave as well. The creeps are actually beating. Nice little surge uh, maker. Oh, look the, at that. Or oh, the creeps won. That's that feels bad. <laughs> nice, nice old. The creeps won. Oh no. The creeps beat the wards. That was crap. You see that little, that tiny little divot kind of. That that's the place from the shaman. S small things, small game. Dude, I'd be this is it'd be hype as hell if Infamous can turn this one around. That'd be crazy. I actually, um, I was really sitting here trying to think of ways that they can, can, but I don't. Really big see big them. echo slams from Tekka. That's I, what we need. I, 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 yeah, I, but even then, they can, it's, it's yeah. about like getting it's all the, the lanes all the way out, and then it, being able to break high ground is a completely different story when you're this. One. I am hoping for it though. Wow, so so far, it's, it has been one sided, which of course is is very impressive from, from perspective. But you always like to see a bit of a back and forth, and not a lot of the fourth and not a lot of the back. I've been running away with it. Their star-studded performance from Rezo and, and boys. Did you hear that time? I heard it that time. I, I did. You heard it, right? Go, bottom lane. Empire, ready the to kick things off. See who's getting the jump first. Ghost it. He's looking for Tomato, but Tomato with the TP out. Tusk won't be as lucky. It's going to be Matthew down. That's a that's a dagger three already. It's a pretty rich old puck. With a veil, plus the nature's nature's profit off the and soul catcher, I believe it was. Right? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. The, the hero's just popped. He died. So, I mean, just the one. Just too bad for Infamous, despite the fact that there was a, a fair few of them around. The cells safe. Tekka in the sidelines. Set up for anything. I'm just going to jump. They're, they're, they're attempting this. 
Do they have the damage? No, with the wars they don't have the control and FN just jumps in, bursts down the Shaman. Resolution oh, to looking to punish Tekka as he will dive the base for this. We'll get the Earthshaker and indeed on the back lines as well. The Torrents there connects onto Benjaz as Empire take the third. I think I want to say that they pinged him because they have a mid ward, so they actually knew that King Tekka was inside that tree line there. So they kind of wanted to start the fight on that high ground. Because Rezo ran up and that ward definitely saw King Tekka walk into those trees. So that looks like Empire kind of just baiting them a bit. Now they're with those big offs and moving. Siege of Bits and is dead. There's no Echo Slam as well, of course. After Tekka popped it for that attempt on Rezo's life. Yeah. Mato does back up now and Mato has been threatening though. He's been quietly farming the back, catching up. No, he's not been bad with that Bloodstone level, done. Level 18, Bloodstone, and Yules, Shadowblade. He's also going for the Dragon Lance, so going for that attack speed or attack. It has to be the scaling core since yeah. his other ones don't really do so. It's I mean and you gotta bear in mind they they're at a twenty K gold deficit, but they've yet to lose a tier three. As you say, you know the tomato is on par with the farm of the enemy uh, enemy mid lane. They're, they're, they're pretty close. So there, there, there is glimmer of, of hope here for Infamous, um, albeit very small ones. Certainly with the lead that Empire have, and the fact that Resolution is, yeah, is just an absolute issue. He it is so fine. He's sitting on 4k gold that he really, he doesn't need to buy anything. He really doesn't need to even spend it. Yeah. The discrepancy between like Weaver and Benno, and the discrepancy between Nature's Prophet and Earthshaker, that is the gold. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Such a different, and as you say, a lot of it just came down to the smart laning decision from Empire. Yeah, and the way that they played it. Really nicely done. The opening of this game, and it's, it's forced Infamous, Infamous into this position where they're really struggling to climb back in. Indeed, and Empire getting themselves back together up top with that Aegis, ready to to try and get something done with it. We'll see if they're able to break the high ground. Tekka has the Echo Slam back and available. TP's back to base. Matthew as well can rejoin the rest of his team up here. See so with the wall starting to lay down, Inf Inf Infamous have got good ways of holding the high ground. It it's not that easy for Empire to just straight up waltz up to the high ground and push, unless they get killed. Yeah. The way for them to really just straight see just kill the Venomancer, because yes. I know it's a big issue with those. Sherlina is also... So, they do still have Aegis and Cheese, and they have BKBs, so... If they can just make sure that their lanes are in very good positions, they may actually just build a fort that they can instantly blow someone up with Stag and Five Veil combo that they do have on FN. And FN's also about to hit level 20, so you get the 10% spell line on top. Oh, jump forward. You see the yours as they look to try and catch him out, but of course with the X marks on him. And will be brought back to safety by Roger. That's a clever way for them to get the pick off and then go for the siege, right? X into Blinken, try to burst somebody and then get out. Absolutely. I mean, whether they use on FN or obviously with Rezo as well, allowing him to go ham. But at the moment, it's just the place with the puck. FN going in. The only thing what they really have the chance of doing is is trying to time that time that Yules, but it's not that easy to do. And then silence onto two, bursting the shaman down low. We'll get the shrine off. This time the X Mark is not there to bring him back out, but FN dukes out the stern with the phase shift, drops the coil, only collects, connects onto one. FN being brought down so damn low, and in comes the boat. It's not even needed at the end of the day to bring down the shaman as Axel's already dead. Ghostic does get taken down though by Matthew. Infamous with a massive pick off. Can they get anything more out of it? Disarms there onto the Weaver, jump forward from Benjaz as he lays down the ult, bringing Maposhka down low. Benjaz was seeing pretty tanky. Resolution can't quite kill him, tries to get himself away, but they'll lose the Aegis on the Weaver. FN blinks out just in time, but Infamous is not too bad of a hold. They are holding. Now Rezo pots the BKB. He's ready to try and go back in and finish it. But the evasion, Benjaz, he's going to get away. He's going to be able to survive with that last hit missing. As he gets out, jump forward from FN as he's trying uh -oh. to catch this, this Venom and punish him. He will juke out the stun, but the Hex and the Shackle are there. FN throws his life away. That's him giving the gem over to the side of Infamous. And they are holding. Now Rezo doesn't die, but he loses the Aegis. The rest of his team fall apart. And I can't believe that there was 20k gold deficit. And they're making it impossible for Empire to break the high ground. Tier 3 still up. And that was without Echo. He didn't even use it. Or Shadow Shot What is words. going on? Uh, did he even use Laguna? I guess they, must, they probably used Laguna. They, they the used top. the Laguna at the okay. start. At the start. They, they used Laguna you. at the start. Goodness, Tekka as well. Quick with the blink out. Getting himself away from Rezo. He's yeah. trying to hold this. 
lot of mistakes though, I'll say, from Man part of the way they see it there. FN didn't use the veil initially when he blinked up on the high ground, so if he had actually oh, veiled yeah, the Shadow Shaman, would have 100% yeah. killed him and yeah. he would not have gotten Chain Hex disabled, so that was a bit of a mistake there too, and just the way that they kind of like, ah. walked back and forth and didn't just like, commit, they, it was like, it seemed like indecision kind of coming from there. But, that being said, Rezo is a monster. He he's still is, he really still is, and obviously looking for the heart next, then... He's just going to be so tanky. Even if they catch him and they disable him, will they actually have the damage to get through? Not at least until we see that next big item from from Tomato. Yeah. He's, he's feeling he has to go for the BKB first, so even with that, the damage isn't quite going to be there. But he's, he's playing it really nicely, as we've seen it. Considering how far as a team they are behind, the fact that this Lina, he's, he's sitting on 15 Bloodstone charges off that defense. It's, it's going in the right direction. He does pretty much have the money for the BKB. But uh, a big item pickup certainly being picked up for Ghost Stick off the back of that. Did go down on the start of that fight, but now has the Assault Crash picked up for the team. That is certainly going to help with this sort of a siege. Yeah. Having that armor, having that, that ability to take down the towers a little bit quicker with the reduction. No more evasion now too for the Venomenta with the MKB on Rezo. Oh, has full he got it? Oh. Full one purchase though after that fight. Certainly going to solve that. Yeah, Penjas certainly would have been dead if that MKB was in place. I mean, even even with the MKB, as we said, he got decent armor, so it's not not like he's necessarily going to melt immediately. Yeah, but uh, no certainly much. more capable of being taken down. That's got the force though now as well. So an extra little bit. If he's, as long as he keeps himself close to the base, can certainly try and cut his way up to the high ground, and make it hard for Rezo to chase. Quite a bit to recover, but yeah, some good steps on the way there. Kink that can now moving from bottom, keep that smooth pushing out, and they don't have all their lanes at their base. I like that though. You saw that instant ping from Empire saying the shaker's gone. Let's try and get something done. They they're hovering around top. They themselves don't have well, okay, don't have ghosty, but of course he's an anxious but he can be there at uh, moments before. Yeah, he's now made it back. Does have the money for that Shadow Blade, and this is this is certainly going to be a big one, as, as, as we know, and uh, well, we're yet to really kind of see, but the Echo Slam could be absolutely massive in a game like this where the ST Illusion is coming through, you've got the Treants. They should know that the gem was picked up again, though. They did buy a new one for FN, and okay. I think Maposhka has been carrying sentries a lot of this game, so has the Kunkka, so they have to watch themselves at least just to be aware that there is detection place. There we go, they're coming out themselves. They're oh, disruption. Well, very nicely done. Meaning there's no instant echo to get that set up onto Rezo. Now Ghostic comes in with the Orchid and the BKB. Nice snowball across though to the Illusions to get themselves out of there, but Axel's trapped in the Sprout. Rezo comes forward with FN. They'll get the kill. Ghostic will be trapped up by the Serpent Wars, but there's no follow lockdown. Tekka comes in with the Echo Slam, bringing FN down low, but he still gets the phase shift off. Rezo with the BKB looking to chase down the Shaker. Diffuses him down from the Yule Scepter, will claim the kill on Tekka, and they'll look to also potentially get this Venom who's ticking down low. Some time will be bought for him here with the snowball, but it is going to be a snowball down to the low ground. Evasion isn't going to be enough to save him for the right clicks. Flying through from Ghostic, as Infamous will lose four, and Empire, now they're in that position to finally take a tier three, move up to the racks, and just assert this this, this lead that they've had and get it, get it to use in terms of taking structures as they'll clean up the middle lane. Looks like they will back out. Back, Matthew comes in. Oh, he's in trouble now. He will cancel that, that attempt to, to leave by the Nation Prophet. Axel jumping in as well. That, that was a, a very bold move there for the Shaman who instantly gets blocked up, bursted down by the Dagon. That was getting a little too ahead of themselves there as they try and punish Empire on the way out. They're only just throwing their own lives away. Mist is not able to get the proper spell uses that they want in these fights. It's just too hard for these elusive heroes and all these BKBs being forced out. Especially having to deal with Rum and yeah, just the elusive puck getting into being so obnoxious, it's it's just super hard for them to take those kind of engagements. They can't get the proper spells in. If the Weaver is actually able to close the distance on Delina, you see what happens. Oh, He's gonna get melted by Rezo. He here. absolutely is. He Ooh, ah, Shadow Blade saving his backside. He will live. The question is if they can get them off these racks. The melee racks surely will fall. I mean, the Yule's up, Weaver trying to buy some time for them. The racks finally go though. Snowball there to juke out the combo, straight in onto Roger, but the rum is out. Diffusal Blade onto Matthew. Resolution trying to move forward. Excel quick there with the jump in. Holds back the Weaver. Does have the shackle. I mean, Excel's almost certainly going to pay with his life, but he has saved his teammates. 
as he will indeed get popped. They've got the Echo Slam back up. Tekka with the Shadow Blade, looking to find the position. He isn't going to quite get it. Oh no! He's going to look to try and find FN, but he hasn't quite got enough damage. Torrent connects, Rezo's in, looking to finish him off. Tekka uses himself up. They get the Light Strike. In fact, they're going to try for this here. They're coming in with the Snowball. Rezo, he has the BKB time lapse. He will survive. GG is called as Infamous do though tap out. They've lost too many heroes. They can't bring it back anymore. And Empire just finished this absolute blazer of a game for Resolution. 17-0-13, not a single death on him. Yeah, he owned this game, his team. Uh, it was it was mostly down to lane decisions. I think yeah. Infamous had a lineup that can work if they don't get crushed super hard in lanes because they're all magic damage orient oriented. But if they get crushed like that, their ro the recovery method is just near impossible. I really was. This lineup that just runs at you and takes all your building. Well, we'll see if Infamous can kind of switch it up in game two. We, we know they've got potential with what we've seen them take a game against Secret today, but this game one against Empire did did not look too great. I mean, they, they obviously had, had just a little moments where, you know, you've got to respect the fact that they were very far behind and they were still... They stopped Empire from stomping them in like 20 minutes. They managed to draw it out, yeah. but there never was quite the opportunity to turn it back. We'll see what happens in game two. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Myself and Fog will be back for more Empire versus Infamous.
also use the glimpse to send people away. Well, you can't do that as that's a tongue, true. right? That's yeah, a big okay. one, where yeah, if yeah, someone's yeah, TPing the, and you yeah, can't X them and the throw point. them away. The glimpse just sends them the hell out. I, I guess. They're, they're sending a different map. The Shadow Shaw It's going to be grabbed this time around by Empire. We saw Infamous uh, pull it out last game. and Let's get a few cheeky plays off with it. Tower. Yep. Definitely the most favorable down. five hero in this tournament period. Definitely a hero though that I feel already that the 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 Night Stalker the vibe is not necessarily a, a super nice game to pick the Shaman in. You know, so no. you sometimes see it. It's like this is fantastic. They're gonna have that catch and such, but these are two beefy heroes and beefy heroes as well. You know, if they, they get a little bit of poison on that Shaman or a, a, a crippling fear or a void, they're, they're gonna be changed. Oh. And there we go. I mean, we're, talk I'm talking well, we're talking about, about it. about the disruptor, and we get it for. So, this happened earlier when what was their hero? We're talking we were about Slarder. We're talking they about Slarder, yeah. and they pick a Slarder. I'm uh, talking about disruptor, and we see a disruptor in this game. I'm, uh, maybe I'm gonna see it. I'm saying there's similar spells. We're gonna see is what, what wins the game: glimpses or X marks. I'm yeah. totally down for this one. Though. Yeah, we, we were mentioning like, yeah. another vision with Night Stalker that could be really good. You get the vision with Night Stalker. Disruptor can get the glimpses off a lot easier, yes, that's and really it's also nice. great versus Puck and Kunkka if they do. It is position that the, the silence wow. is incredibly strong versus Puck. <laughs> we'll see that. You have it, ladies and gentlemen. Let's what are the see. odds of that, right? Two two games now it's that we <laughs> talk about a hero. And that these are heroes, they, you know, they really don't come up, uh, you know, for, uh, in general. I I want to say this is probably. I won't be surprised if this is the first disruptor pick of the day. I, I haven't seen all the games, of course. But I think sure, it might yeah, be one of, the, one of the. This is a Puck and Invoker on the same team, so Puck offline. Okay. And they're going to be doing a fan mid. Obviously, oh. very nice with the Kunkka setup. What we got? I'm not what are you thinking? thinking? I was just thinking of like a joke. It's just like the I see Invoker and I think Resolution. I'm just like the throwback to Navi. Navi Resolution Invoker mid. Get double Forge Spirit Necro book. <laughs> I was trying to remember in the past what Rezo. Was he a mid turn carry or was he a carry before he started that period where he played mid? He was carry before mid. He was carry before mid and then went back to carry. Because he played mid for quite a while. Didn't I do he? remember him playing mid for a while, but I remember yeah. him playing carry too. Because on, on, when he was on Empire, he was the mid player all the time, was it? But it's been sold. Who was the carry when he was on Empire? I can't even Empire remember. Was, was it Ramsey? It was Ramsey. Silent. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Silent was the safe Silent lane. Silent was the safe lane, and Ramsey so, was always mid. There was a quite quiet period indeed when he played that that mid lane, and yeah, definitely did play Invoker. I mean, who knows? Maybe let's do it. Let's get him on the mid lane, and uh, get well. well you, yo, you definitely can do that because you can get FN. That's, FN's a slark picker, isn't he? FN is a slark picker. He is a slark. He he definitely can can roll out on the safe lane. FN plays Invoker too. But he's shot, yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to do the throwback. I mean, it would be so, cool to see them yeah, switch it around. That'd be fun. But uh, yeah, it's, so it's yeah definitely like they won't do what that. What could be scarier? Maybe the drow ban for Infamous could be okay. Like they don't maybe want to get like last drowed with okay. the Invoker puck. It makes yeah. the puck off lane always better. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The one thing that Infamous could be thinking about as their last ban, but what are they going to be grabbing? He going to give a lot of information. It's going to tell pretty much exactly where Viper and Night Sucker are going. Oh. I mean, what did you say? You expect the the Viper's normally safe lane with Infamous? It, it goes. Or it goes both. They, they do know, both. Oh, okay. I know Tomato. I know him as like a as a player and as a person. I know he doesn't like playing it, but they like to put it on him because they like the hero overall. Right. This is the indicator. Yeah. This. Joke. I mean. You sure? I mean, I was going to say, this is, didn't they still leave it open? They could put the jug mid against the Invoker, they... grab a poor man's, not that bad in that matchup, is it? It's not great. Nah. It's, it's not what you want. Okay. You'd rather have your oh, okay. safe free farming juggernaut. And Viper wins the mid matchup versus Invoker pretty pretty handedly. I, I guess the jug as well is, is a hero that farms very, very easily against a puck off. Yeah. You get the poor man's, you can have the healing ward a couple of levels in. It's it's very hard for the puck to harass you out of that. Yeah, and you can leave the, you can leave the jug and make moves. Nice sucker. And with the catch from Disruptor, you know, just having that combo in lane as well, you're, you're going to get the chance for the Blade Fury rundown. If yep. that puck makes one one wrong move, there is kill potential. I like the Night Stalker ban. Great. The Night Stalker ban? Sorry. The Nyx Assassin, Assassin yeah. ban. Because it's not only just <laughs> yeah. like the, they have the, in, the, you know, the int offlaner puck, int yeah. mid laner for Invoker, oh, but yeah. it's also the vision game. You're playing with Night Stalker, Vision Vision's going to be an issue, but with the Knights, uh, with the Nyx Assassin kind of creeping in Vendetta, it could definitely cause more issues for Empire. So I do like that one, and I know Kinteka does like to play. Final ban from Infamous. We expect looking to target resolutions here are actually going to be this yeah. fan. So, a lot of very strong Rezo heroes are still in that pool. They're 
the Lycan's still there. The, there is the, the anti Trial Mage. Rangers there, you know, the, anti the ones we saw being banned at last game. I mean, I guess obviously the the side of Infus they feel maybe with a the Viper in the night they're not as worried about an anti Mage. They've got Catcher and Disruptor. They've, they've they've certainly got ways to deal with it. Yeah, and it's not if a Rezo great. says pick me AM game. It's not a great AM game either. No, like, there's no, no one he really like, does yeah. great versus at all. So I'd be pretty surprised if they did grab AM for. It would be pretty great. For Rezo. But obviously they do have a lot of confidence now. Here we know how. how Carry game and there's the king today. Grabbing that off. Let's see what we have here then. Rezo, he knows what he's up against in lane. Axe. Good versus like when the rum starts to tick out, so you can get those dunks. I mean, it's also like that clear initiator for them to get. Yeah. Those like the disruptor ulti and stuff off. But trying to run something aggro for. Sound good though versus Puck. I think they. I don't think. Yeah, one v one Axe Puck doesn't sound no, like the dream horrible. for Axe. Yeah. So I, w I wouldn't be surprised if we see the the standard. Obviously, unless Empire themselves try and force that matchup. As I want them. Maybe a bit dissuaded from the Lycan versus Axe. Could be possible because he has a Shadow Shaman. That's what it was yeah. the indicator. Say like and Drow Ranger look. Drow certainly. Oh, the Necro. The necro. Okay. Okay. So more. I mean that that is. I mean you could kind of say to Re that that you know if there's the, obviously going to be the axe off lane, you to leave Rezo on his own. Yeah. Like, and the supports can move around. Absolutely. So they're doing one one, yeah. similar similar kind of thing as before. Yeah. With uh, you have Rezo sibling, they can run around the Kunkka. And the Shadow Shaman to at least pressure for Ghost. Maybe they actually just start bottom and they just leave Rezo. I think up. you definitely can. I, I mean, think possible. What do, what do Infamous do if they do that? You know, you, you, do they send someone up to help the Axe? It's yeah. They I mean that's it's pretty strong for the the Necro pick. Seems like a real nice finisher. Yeah, it's very similar to the Nature's Prophet that happened yeah. last time. Wow. Two ladies and gentlemen. So uh, we'll see if Empire can clean up the 2-0 if Infamous can turn it around. They so did of course have a very tough time in game one, but rather different draft this time, right? Big fan of the Necro pick. Not yeah. really a crazy amount of magic damage actually. It's Disruptor ulti and the Void from Night Stalker. That is literally like all their magic damage. And not really too many ways they can stop him from getting off that. Oh, obviously they have the Static Storm. Um, oh, they, I guess they've got the Crippling Fear. Yeah. So, uh, they've got, okay, they, they've, got, they've got a couple of silences, and we'll yeah. see see how Rezo wants to deal with that in terms of his build. So, how are they going to land it? We see Boots on the Kunkun Shadow Shaman. They haven't decided just yet where they're going to go, but the, by the looking of their items, they're just going to be moving around a lot. Yeah, um, uh, as we were saying, I think that certainly is acceptable. And they put Ghost Stick to have... Look at Ghost Stick's items. Those are some contesting... Oh, those are some yeah. fight items right now on the puck. He has the... Maximum amount of attributes and eight tango, so they're gonna be playing around him. Looks like Axe is going safe lane and it is going to be infamous. Uh, so that's infamous avoiding what we we, we were expecting into Empire C, isn't it? They don't want to put the axe on the solo against Reza. Yeah, they want to, to get it. that away. Yeah, and I mean, it, so so then you have obviously this aggressive tri lane. Is that that that's pretty pretty terrifying for Necro? Can Reza still hold himself, hold his own there down on that bottom lane? They'll probably have to help him. Yeah, that force stay down. If they get like, if he steps out of position at all, spin. But to be fair, even I mean Shadow Shaman, it, it's another. If he steps out of position as well, this this tri lane can certainly punish. It could be pretty tricky for him by the bottom lane. Yeah, it's that deep ward that Infamous does place too yeah, is quite nice. They've and got that vision for the catch. And they're dire, so it lets them. It lets the creep wave meet at a better spot for them in that off lane. Play more aggressively, and yeah, with the vision from there, they can actually get like glimpses to get step too far up. I guess the, the thing is, though, despite obviously you are taking away the axe from that necro lane, which is pretty nasty, as we did mention, it is still going to be an axe versus puck lane, which I mean, is maybe a little little better for the axe, but it, it's still not a great matchup. No, definitely not. I mean, he just needs to make sure that he blocks that hard camp. And we look at Ghostic right now, I look at his positioning, he's standing there blocking the camp because you. As an axe in this safe lane, you wanna you run up, you pull the aggro of the creep wave on yourself, you stack your hard camp, you pull it to the side, you get a double camp, and you deny it the wave. So bottom lane, they are starting deep in the trees. They are waiting for one of the Empire people to step up, and it looks like it's gonna happen. 
Razzle steps a bit too far up. There we go. They've got the trap. And that, that should be a first blood here, Rezo. Can he get himself away from this? He cannot. Move is successful. Try then. Coming into play here down bottom. And they have a ward in the mid lane too, so they actually see Roger, the Kunkka, set up there as well. So they know they can go for those type of super aggressive plays. I mean, not really the campfire. Turn that one around with their hero. Roger's presence certainly needed in that mid lane. I mean, this, you know, Viper and Poker matchup is certainly a lane where things can get very, very nasty for that invoker. Especially when there's a lane ward. I mean, lane ward makes it just, Viper can always do that harassment kill bottom lane. It may be just another kill on Rezo. He's still just level one. He's got one more burst heal to get out, but Matthew dives in with the void, gets the kill. They'll look towards Maposhka now, and they may even get this one. There's a Blade Fury available if Benjaz wants to chase for it. Maposhka won't quite get trapped though by the field. Does actually bring down Matthew in return. Plus we'll lose one back there in the trade, but still leading 2-1, having that first blood under the belt. This time around, it, it certainly seems overall the lanes favoring Infamous Yes, with these picks, and they themselves going aggro. I mean, I guess they saw how well Empire pulled it off last game. They said, we're going to try that ourselves. They should get another one out of this. As the field's down, traps him at Poshka, chases him with the Blade Fury. Benjaz picks up another perfect play down on this bottom lane from him. Yeah, they have to watch how far they step up, but that's the beauty of having the... It's, a, it's on the dire for Infamous, that yeah. how far the creep wave actually met, and... Yeah, oh, he's only level one. And now it's where Kunkka makes some moves. Invis. This is a big one, if they can get it. Penjaz has had a pretty nice opening, one zero two, and indeed with the Torrent and the Sun Strike, he's being brought down low. They'll X mark him back, make sure there's no escape. That rotation absolutely required there from Roger. Coming in just when it was needed. Manages to just even this little bottom lane back off for Empire. Just a little bit. They, just I a think, little bit. I think they like have to keep the tri lane down here now, to be honest. As long as they, and until they see the infamous supports. Once they see the infamous supports, they can start to like have TPs and make rotations, but they're definitely needed to be sitting behind Rezo. And Rezo should be able to actually start surviving a lot easier once he has Ghost Crown and on, Mont, because he can always, you know, crowd and have on charges to up and the damage from Infamous and Charlotte isn't, isn't massive, it's just the Blade Fury. True, yeah, uh, he's, and he's already level 3, so that's a second point and it does make all the difference and as you say, Ghost Rout is nice for the burst heal, but at the same time you've got to be careful taking that increased magical damage. Yeah, he's got to be able to, he's got to wait, as yeah. long as he has a good amount of wand charges, he can actually survive their burst, but if he doesn't, then they still have enough to bring him. So, top, we do see Ghost Stick free farming as expected. Again, going for the Orb Defender build since melee hero. Tekka's not actually doing uh, maybe as bad as we, we did expect in response. You know, he's keeping very close to the CS of the Puck, so yeah. Puck unable to really zone him out of the lane. Down bottom, Empire making a go on it. Again, this combo shackle in Torrent and the Sunstrike bringing Matthew down low. He'll try and juke himself away, but the heal flies through. He'll lose his life. They do get Maposhka in return, but overall it's Empire getting the better trade. Axel falls as well as Rezo picks up the double, and Ben Jazz is sent packing back up the lane. This bottom starting to turn around now with Empire, just as you mentioned, just keeping those supports down there. It is making the other lanes a little tricky as Tomato gets in, forces FM back. Kind of uh, stuck at the tree line now. I don't know what the plan was there as he tries to go deep into the trees. But Empire, quick with the two TPs from the supports, Roger and Miposhka making the plays, securing bottom lane, but still having the chance to get to that mid and make things a little safer for FM. Big mistake there by Tomato. When he's leading so much in the lane, he sees the supports die bottom. He has to know that he's going to be coming from the bottom lane. Rezo's completely isolated. It was nighttime before the crippling fear, and but the, as you said, enough. Yeah, they do have the glimpse back. That's and just enough. <laughs> they, will, they will get him, but it's very close now. Yeah, he had, I think, Only six just got the glimpse vision as well. It looked like Reza was going to get into the tree line. Yeah, it looked like he had, what, like six or seven wand charges when he backed up and used the... Almost enough, but with that glimpse. Yeah, I, I, I guess they did have the... They were always going to have the range. Oh. It's close on. But, uh, close play from both sides. We're five minutes in. It's pretty much neck and neck in the net worth. Top lane continues just to be a trade in the farm. Pekka, and as you said, expected to, to make good use of the, the side camp. Yep. Getting good amounts from this lane. Needs to make sure he goes back up. He has to go back and heal, though. Down bottom, they're possibly trying to go for a kill onto XL with the setup, but he's going to end up losing his own life here as Matthew comes in. They'll take down one. Rezo will be forced back. XL. They need the three. They, they need do. Three heroes when they do. Risk it. You can. 
maybe you get a cleanup, but it's it's the risk factor. You're playing at nighttime versus Night Stalker in a bit of a stronger aggro than you have. Overcommit is a safer play. Being sent out to model. Level 7 as the Viper in the mid lane versus level 5 in Volker. So he's still doing his job of heavily shutting down FN. It's quite the dip. Obviously, the, the fact that that dual lane presence was there with Roger for a little bit, causing the XP to be in this condition as well, but... Fen could be in trouble. Look at this wraparound. Matthew, ready to come in for some action. If he has a silence out in time, they've got a good chance of getting it. Smart reaction, though, from FN. He knows that he can get out without any difficulty, straight up TPing. Ghost is they can get something in response. Yeah, Ghost is coming in with Dream Call. Only connects on Tomato, but they've got the Shackle follow up. The Torrent won't oh. quite connect. A little awkward there as he gets dragged back with the X Mark a little too late. The Poshka actually being turned upon by Infamous that they just man up. Can Empire actually finish off these two kills? Matthew will get taken down. Ghostic and Roger looks like they will just get the kill on Viper as well. So at the end of the day, Things are looking to be in the clear in that mid lane for Empires, as you say. You know, Ghostic coming across just in time and picks up a double kill. Perfect rotation from the puck. Very nice. Sun Strike was a little awkward. That uh, X will pull out, but enough to be able to bring down Miposhka bottom. Looks like he's going to be the culprit. I mean, I got that. Miposhka is playing very, very aggressive here. I mean, they do end up getting the kill onto the Disruptor uh, off the back of that X marks into Torrent Sun Strike combo. Matthew's going to give Roger a bit of a rundown. Uh, Roger does have a friend, though, as Rezo comes around the tree line and forces him back. Uh, but him and Posh, I mean, he just goes in and grabs him. Uh, he has died five times for it. Uh, but he, he certainly has set up for as, as many kills as he's died for. <laughs> he's making the kills happen, but it's costing him his life every time. It's it's a very Maposhka thing to yeah. do. Look how he plays his clockworks or whatever, and he's running around. He usually has many deaths, but he's kill participation. Kill participation. Hi. And at least they get FN a Sunstrike kill out of yes. that, which he desperately yeah. needs. He needs to be able to get that Midas on a decent timing. He's already quite set back from cleaning matchup. But from Matthew, he's, he has smoked up. Daytime now. A little harder for him to close that gap with the yeah, And King Tech up top looks like they're making the engagement. Got enough burst. Yeah, with the Sunstrike, they certainly have. They, they do have a lot of burst between. So my push got a kill, and now he has to die, right? That's the way it's working. Uh, apparently so. <laughs> Good rotation coming out from him. That's the benefit, though. When you do die, you have the alleviation of being able to just like move to a different lane. Quick. It's working for him. It's making it work. Rezo. Best to pick the farm back up. Still a little lacking in that lane Auto position. Committing on lane. mid here. Yeah, Matthew's there with the wraparound. FN has no escape. Roger will come through. We'll see if he gets anything in return. The Poshka actually coming in with the long wraparound. Get the new onto two of them. Jump forward from Ghosted with the Dream Coil to find the kill onto Tomato. And Empire, they're not done yet. Matthew may be pretty beefy on the Night Stalker, but is it going to be enough to save him? It's not. The shackles are out from the Poshka as Empire claim a second. Even Rezo joined them, right? So they bring all five heroes in response, Empire, to the mid lane. Their bottom lane is... It's pretty tough to stay down there now, especially when Juggernaut's level 6, so understandable for Rezo to make the moves when Force leaves him. Blink Deco finished up the Vanguard. Blink Deco's gonna be the secondary. It's gonna be, it's gonna be delayed quite a bit. Fairly even and very aggressive early laning phase. We had a game earlier today where we did which had only 20 kills after like 4 minutes almost, and now this one has the 20 kills in the first 9, so I'm pretty happy with this. Oh, she was trying to gra get a grab. Benj has there down at the bottom lane, but... Has snuck a win. Blink dagger. Done. By the way, who picked... Ghostic has one. It was Ghostic, you know. Grabbed his, so the jump will be there. So they want to. Empire definitely wants to be playing around Ghost Stick in this yeah. game so far too. They want to be running like four squad around while the Invoker just sits between the mid lane and that jungle. And yeah, just sit four heroes other than that. It's usually how it works with an Invoker. You want to be able to have your Midas. Even once you get Midas, you're not really the con line. You need Aghanims to really be a team fighter. Mid lane, and Invis Tomato. Aye, that's that's a freebie with that. Invis runes certainly proving to be one of the strongest all round runes in the early game. A lot of favorable heroes at the moment that can utilize that to just, just get a guaranteed kill half the time. Bottom lane. 
They do have the shackles out onto Ben Jazz. There with the Reapers as well. Perfectly done by him. Enough damage, new came down. And Rezo is, after having that very rough start, Climbing that up shaky there. start, he's back. He's got Veil finished with the Raindrop as well. Level 8 too. He has completely recovered mid lane. Combo. That's straining onto the Viper. Jump forward from Ghost Stick. They have the silence. Do they quiet the damage? Stick charges come out, but there's the Dream Cog. Controlling two of them. Tekka coming in. Loops for the call. Does grab the puck. Tomato's still alive for the time being. There's the Glimpse back as well. Roger could be in still trouble. Alive. He's got the X mark of the torrent. Tomato will finally go down, but Roger has to pay of his life. It's a double kill as Tekka goes absolutely ham. Does miss the call onto Rezo. Still He's trying spinning. to chase him down. FN is there, and Rezo, yeah, it's still of course with the ult on cooldown, won't be able to quite turn. So they get the Viper, but again, they lose two for it. King Tekka got, I, I, I cannot even count how many spins he had there. I'm looking at the damage he got done. 1,809 damage. It, <laughs> I mean, I wish it showed how many spins he actually ah. got, because I think he got like seven or something in, that, in the midst of all those creeps. He's nearly got the blink off the back of that as well. Yeah, that on was... On top of the Vanguard, so that... That was very good for Infamous. Tomato died, but I mean... He tanked for way long enough for his team to come and help. Poshka with the split push top now with Ghost Stick. Looks like Infamous though trying to test this a bit. It is nighttime. Poshka. It's very low. I think he's not getting out of this one. Classic sort of shaman conundrum. Yeah. Oh the my, they actually seem to find the luck too. They do. Straight up Axel getting the trap with the static stone. Drags him back into the clutches of Tekka's axe. And Infamous. Stepping things up. Now getting a bit of pressure done onto this middle lane. They will clean out the wards in time. That they even set up for the tower deny as well. So some nice plays from Infamous. King Take Tekka control. really showing why this is, I mean, his best hero in pubs and everything. I see him play it all the time. Okay. So he is definitely showcasing that quite a bit. 3-1-1. Even going for the Vanguard first, which we do see, which we don't really see too often. I don't see I axe to be honest, but we don't. To be fair, no. It's, it's certainly fallen out of favor for a lot of teams. Yeah, he's. Having an incredibly good game though. And now he's gonna go stack some more ancients. That's a big is he gonna get the to stack timing? Yeah, I don't think so. He realizes this. Just a little lay off it. Oh he's gonna be so rich though. Yeah, he's that gonna blade mount's gonna come very soon. Yeah. Split the XP with Benjaz too, because it's a level 12 axe already. Absolutely massive. Tekka. Ben. Still playing the farm game catch up on the route for that that Ags. It's still going to be a bit of time, but we're seeing yeah. the net worth on Tekka. Sailing ahead this game. Comparison to all of them, of course. He's going to have such, their, such an early blade mail. I mean, it's 13 minutes. He's more than halfway there with Blink and the Vanguard. Very substantial. Tomato with the Lance finished up. Benja is still a bit a bit behind, but they ran him in an aggro tri lane, so that's to be expected. He's not going to have that super full farm, especially because he died twice. But now it looks like they're trying to group up and go for that siege on that bottom tower. And Empire wants nothing to do with it. They're going for the trade. The stand on these side. Posh didn't nearly have the wards. A few seconds back up so he can drop those. Get the safe takedown on the middle. Now. Matthew. Zen places Very a deep nice ward. deep ward. That, that, maybe even setting up for, for Infamous to look to push down two towers here. Yeah, push two towers yeah. or invade the jungle. You know there's no wards. In fact, Benjaz, he's going to be able to clean up a few of these. Well, I, he, yeah, he, I think he's, he wants to play it careful with Empire. Still in the neighborhood. King Tekka's here. He's smoked up. He's ready for this Matthew with the wraparound. Let's see what he could do. They've got the Disruptor TP into, but he's going to get bursted down before it's bumped. So. They are going to let you just jump in, grab the Kunkka. In they go with the Omni Slash. The Dream Core will be laid down. Tekka a little early with the, the dunk, but they'll still get the kill nonetheless. Blade Fury to chase down Maposhka. The Silence is there onto Matthew. They'll actually a buyback for the Kunkka to get himself in this fight. Maposhka goes for the Shackle, but Infamous beats him down. See so if they can actually do anything with this, with this buyback on, on the Kunkka. He's going to throw out the bow and the X Mark onto Tomato. It's not going to be enough to get the kill. We'll hold him back. I, they, they look like, I think they're lagging. Yeah, it seemed like they were, because Ghost kind of just stood still for a while on that engagement. But, I mean, this looks super bad for Empire. they got to get the hell out. I mean, this it could be a dieback on Roger. They have got the slow from the poison on him. Uh, sure blinks back up in a couple of seconds from Tekka. Yeah. There's a healing ward down, too. They're um, going to be absolutely full health on Infamous. They did get stunned up on two of their heroes. So 
isn't slow. He does have the corrosive slow on him now. I think Matthew should be able to catch up and yeah. be able to get the slow on him. So, yeah. I don't think Roger gets out. Should be a dieback from Roger. FN could turn with a tornado. I believe he's not used it yet, has he? Yeah, I guess he could. They still they have, could, like, deafening blast he and tornado. Could, he could try and do something to keep them off him. Yeah. We'll see what FN's reactions are. Yeah. See how it plays out. Boat. Expended. Did minimal, minimal to zero damage on the Viper. Direct. They used the Reaper Scythe on the himself. Disruptor. I feel like, I feel like they were like, like forced in a position there that they were like, we have to kill this Disruptor or we're going to get punished like way harder because the way that Infamous was collapsing, they get a glimpse on any target. It's another extra kill. They had to... Hopefully the bag issues fixed. So far, I mean, touch wood, we've been pretty fortunate. I don't think we've had any network issues really with any of the games here so far. On day one of the groups has been going very smoothly indeed. And you might have folk were commenting, but it's it's going to be early bet for us, folk. You said me, it? myself, and Fog. Did I? Yeah, you did. Uh, <laughs> me, myself, and Fog. That's <laughs> <laughs> probably just a slight issue. They're Infamous. ready when you guys are. It seems like it's only Empire, though, because Infamous wasn't reacting to it at all. I mean, <laughs> I think Tech are unpaused. And I then... mean, they said ready. Oh, did... Empire said ready. Okay. And then they unpaused, oh, and then they were like, wait, never mind. Oh, yeah, he did. It's randomly. It's King Tekka, but. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna give it a try. Let's see. I mean, I, I really think this Roger should be dead unless the, the FM wants they to do anything change. to save him. They want Rezo instead. Okay. They want higher priority I mean, targets. that makes total sense. That is a big kill to find, and they certainly get it. That pause that yeah. pause was actually more fortunate for Infamous than Empire. I think it might be, because I think, you know, maybe Infamous, if that was live, maybe they just go for Roger because they see yeah. the easy kill, but because they had time to, to talk, they were like, what, well, we can actually get Reza. Matthew's still looking to get that invasion going, too. It will hold him back with the X mark. But uh, certainly taking a beat. I mean, Matthew could chase this. He's got another void. He may even get this kill. I mean, Roger could go for one more X mark. Just uh -oh. the shackle. I mean, they've, they, they've got the three of them beating down onto this Night Stalker. That may just be enough. Sunstrike is going to be slightly off the mark, though. And looks like with the movement and the wand. He actually lives. He will. Oh, don't yeah, go oh. too soon. Oh. Oh. See, he lives. He missed. Oh, my God. I can't believe he lived. I can't believe he lived. Wow. wow, an applause comes out from Infamous as Matthew walks his way back to base. <laughs> oh Damn. my goodness. Can't believe that Dream Call didn't connect. It must have been just on the edge. Bad. Very unfortunate there from Ghostic. He is the one who he said was lagging, so maybe that could True. have been. He, thing he's going to cool maybe. lag on that. He certainly is. We will. We got you. We got you, Ghostic. Definitely slight little misplaced, but Empire. 3k behind, about 4k experience behind as well. They're having trouble kind of just like grouping up and taking straight 5v5 engagements because they have invokers, so they can't yeah. take 5v5 engagements. They have to fight 4v5 in these situations, and here we go. Well, they're going to try something. They're going to run into yeah. everyone, though. This is a, a little risky, and there we have it. Uh -oh. Tekka comes in with the two-man call. This is not the move that Empire wanted to make happen. Roger getting chopped down. The boat will fly through one to two, but now Rezo in the static storm. Glimpse back as well. The double dunk down from Tekka as they take down a second. Matthew to finish off a third on the side as he finds Maposhka. Ooh, they Not were. the smoke they wanted there. I mean, as you mentioned, it, it it's hard, impossible for them to fight, and especially if they walk up from the low ground into Infamous, ready and positioned up on the high. They actually just had absolutely yeah. everybody there. That was like the worst thing that could have actually happened for Empire. Oh, so now Tower Siege. This, this, this infamous team, they, they know how to play around the Viper. they have I've seen them drafted several times before, and this is what they usually do for me. Tomato usually doesn't have as many deaths because oh, look at this. usually I'm being a little more careful. Tekka could get this solo if he catches Ghost Dick with the creeps. He's very close. Oh, the glimpse. Ooh, the glimpse and all the jukes. Ghost Dick drops the coil. They've got the field out. Tekka, he can get in range for the call. Cool. Uh, that, that's going to be Ghost Dick dead. Should be able to get the dung down, and indeed he does. Tekka. With the help of XL and some sweet little disruptor players, I hope to see. Get the kill. Thank you, God. Very good for Infamous in the second game. Yeah, their heroes are super strong versus them. Absolutely, this... 
the laning decision, having that aggro try at the start to really kick things off. Forcing Empire to play Infamous's game has been perfect, Tekka. Move over. He will jump and he will catch you. He's got eyes on dive. FN. Is he going to go for the blind call? He knows that Effen's in the neighborhood. They don't have vision upon him. He knows he's close. Gets him. Oh, yeah, he <laughs> tries it. But yeah, Effen's already out to the side. Yeah. you got to give it a go. He's around. Yeah. Maybe, you know, 20% of the time you can. You're more than likely expecting an invoker at this stage. Like, he's level 12. You're like, okay, it's a level 1 Wex. He's probably super slow in his ghost walk. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a slight chance. That's gearing up. Down the middle with that healing ward, lost of self sustain. They'll get themselves a tier two. She's just trying to wake up. Way up top. Another chance to drop down those walls. Matthew's already on the way up, but could Empire's, play around with this. Empire's definitely starting to realize that they can't take those big engagements anymore, at least. Uh oh. I mean, do, do they even get this kill? over and over again. Uh, they, Matthew's juking this out. He's juking buying the hell out of him. He's buying time for the rest of his team to come across. They they will kill him. But we'll see if Infamous can punish this. They look towards Maposhka. They, they will get the Shaman at least as the puck gets out. He juked them for a, quite a bit there, he, though. He that, certainly made sure that there was the time for that trade in return. That one tree. Two, two. Fifteen, definitely. You know, not as crazy as a lead that we saw Empire have against Infamous in game one. So definitely still the chance for, for Empire to pull this together and get a turnaround. They, they've obviously got this Necro. Hero that you know one good Reaper Scythe can really put a team that's in the lead on the back foot. Yeah, and FN's gonna have the Aghanim, so he can actually be involved in this mid lane though. The taunt comes out. Roger. In a lot of trouble there. I mean, he's gonna go for the TP out and he's not gonna make it. Glimpses there from Excel, drags back the Kunkka. Tekka just getting in position, getting this vision for the team to follow up. 7 1 and 5 at the moment. It's not stopping. They want to go for Rezo top here. Benjaz does have the defusal as well for the Ghost Shroud. And in comes Matthew for that TP stop. He actually uses the defusal right away. He's got a force and a TP. And yeah, that's the smart move from Rezo. Beautifully done. Gets away with it. No hesitation there. Maybe Benjaz may have jumped the gun a little bit, but they probably weren't expecting him to stay much longer for that secondary creep wave. So he just wanted to try to force it. Tekka eyes on him straight away as he goes to nuke down the creep wave. Ooh. He's still dead. Oh, he should be. He's the hunger. He is definitely gone. Tekka just continuing to pick up kill after kill. Carrying clarities in his backpack most <laughs> of the time too, so he's always able to Max keep, efficiency. keep on going. But it looks like they might be able to pick him off this time, but... Quit with a blink. Thought maybe he could get the Dream Coil. That would have been a very big kill if they get Tekka there. So, so far away from the team, but now collapse the top tower. That one up easily. Towers for Infamous. So, Aghanims is finished on FN. They can start to fight around a little bit around the Invoker. Ideally, he wants some more levels before he really gets so, so involved, but they might have to actually make it evolve since we do see Infamous make their way to the Rush Pit. I don't know if they're actually going to go to the test. They're going to know what's going on with that Sunstrike, but they, they, yeah, they're really not in a position to get over there in time. They, they, they've got to just let this one go. Admit that must have the power play here around the pit. Nothing that they can do in fact, Matthew, he's going to come out. He's going to hunt down Maposhka. Give him a bit of a bash. And a glimpse too. He's going to do it. Drag him in. Static Storm down. They'll take that kill. But, uh, it's just a Sharma, but uh, it's going to mean there's no wards for 30 seconds. And wards can certainly be required in your, your home to deal with the push with this very much ahead team. 10k gold lead inside of the moment. Still super hard for them to push high ground, so they're probably like, yeah. you know what, getting kills like that is... Using ultimates on just one hero like that is perfectly fine because okay. Empire cannot fight us and we now want to go make our way to tier 2. Still working high ground, just wait. Without, pick, without more pickoffs. Instead though, King Tech is about to be picking up a BK, full BKB on that. Very nice for him not to care about Rezo and the puck. Absolutely nothing. Stop it from getting the pulls off. There's not a lot of hope of being able to bring down this axe low enough for a Reaper Scythe to finish him off either. Now the siege begins. Healing Word is going to be online soon. They're just pushing it right through this tower. Maybe they can even just force this, and then when they force the reactions back, they can start to back up or even get a glimpse and continue. 
could be what they're looking for for getting here. So this could be the chance for them to actually go for this full siege. If they can get vision of somebody to glimpse them out, that could be where they actually are able to take a big fight. They get the vision of somebody. There we go. The high ground they are. So that tier three. Already bringing it down to half health. What can Empire do to stop this? Fortification comes through. Empire does have a ward outside the base, so they are able to see Excel walk in and put that base ward at least. Power is dropping very quickly. It looks like it's put down by Infamous. And more hits. More. Oh, I get the timing for the deny there. The C Tech are hungry to jump in. Will Kerf, he, his team given the call to do so. The line is drawn by Ghost Stick. Wrap around and try to catch the side, the heroes on the side here. If, if they do that, it feels like the racks are going to be exposed long enough for them to finish it. They, they've dropped the Dream Call, it's only onto the Night Stalker though. They do drag him back into the combo. They'll bring down one. The rest of them are still standing their ground. They'll get the range racks. Mardo moving forward, trying to zone them back. Viper Strike laid down. They use Toil and Boat on. only on one hero, so a lot of their damage potential in this team fight is gone as they're fighting into Aegis. And after the finish, uh -oh. Tekka comes in with the two-man coil. The Static Storm and the Viper Strike thrown down onto Resolution. He's gone. Maposhki gets dragged back by the Glimpse. Nearly brings down Tekka. In fact, they will get the Tekka kill. But overall, it's again trades favoring Infamous. They pick up the kills, they clean up the racks. Tomato will be dragged back into the torrent, but there just isn't the damage from Empire to finish him off. As he'll walk it off. They, 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 They're gonna continue though. They are trying. He is very beefy though. It's gonna take a bit of time. Benjaz is still in the neighborhood with Omni Slash. Is he just gonna let Tomato die? Does he feel there's nothing he can do? Can they even kill him? I mean, him? it looks like, yeah, <laughs> they can't even kill him. Ghost Stick's taking more damage than he's doing. The uh, corrosive skin ticking in. Yeah, Tomato just too beefy. That the Trez, Dragonlance, S and Y now a completed Hurricane Pike. I like that Ben just stayed there though. The rest of the teammates all ditched, but yeah. he was like, you know, this is our Aegis carrier. We can't just leave him like that. That can actually be really costly. Call by them to do that, but yeah, Rax claimed and 11 cake gold lean. I think that was what the BKB finished up for the axe, almost. Yeah, very clear. Definitely looking very good for Infamous. So, almost the pipe finished up on the Night Stalker too, so that'll help a lot versus the Siege, since the majority of Empire's damage is magical. 12k lead for it. Really nice indeed. Tekka, I need to go for Ghost Stick. What's about with the Yule Scepter? The Snyder's as well, making it very hard for Tekka to catch. We'll see if he can read the movements and close. slightly off. Very, very close attempt by Tekka. Ghost Stick should be safe. I say he's still not got a TP for 30 seconds, so we'll still have to stick around and play around with this. Isn't necessarily going to be there if Infamous themselves are able to do any this next 30 seconds. There's no putt. Still got to wait up. Go to be able to cut another creep wave before he heads back. It's keeping the aggression on, trying to keep that patient of game. Because they know it's. They are on a semi kind of time limit. They're not because they have like this great scaling lineup and their advantage that they're in, but Invoker gets to that point where an Invoker can just go out of control. We saw it earlier for Miracle when they were when losing. Yeah. And he just went absolutely berserk. So it's a slight possibility. That being said, though, Infamous does still have a pretty damn strong tricor in going to later stages. Here we go. We saw them get away with the push relatively easy down bottom. They'll let's repeat it up top. Ghosting does have the jump in the foot. Combo onto Tomato, but again, it's just not enough damage. Now Ghostic caught in the Static Storm. Diffusal Blade there to bring him down out of the Yule Scepter. Will still get the face shift off. Can he get himself out of this one? He can't. He's taken down by Tomato with the poison damage. Meteor's dropped. They start to force Infamous back out, but Infamous, they're ready to come back in. Turn towards Roger. Get the double kill for Tomato. Up. And indeed, he does get Hex, but he got the cool off in time. Rezo has to go Shroud back up with the Blade Fury, along with the Diffusal Blade. Cuts down the Necro. Tekka still alive as he gets himself just out in time. There's the Sunstrike, but it's going to be off point. Ben Jazz forces himself out. They can punish anymore. They do get the jug kill. The pipe putting in big work there. The pipe and the urn coming out from Matthew there. Definitely making it so a lot of the heroes on Infamous actually live with low HP and King Tekka there actually gets the blade mail off as the Necro wall comes out. So good chunk of damage got reflected actually to Rezo. 
already quite low. Continuing the siege, even though Benjes is dead. However, they are probably going to need to back out quite soon. No reason really for him to get too crazy. They have. Just play it safe, get your five man back up before you go again. Main. Ghostic try and play around with Matthew. Super Does tanky that Roger there, it's, it's, I mean, Ghostic himself is just taking much more of a beating. Matthew will continue to chase him down. They do have the boat coming in with the Sunstrike. It will bring Matthew down low, but as you say, he has that pipe. He just turns, he turns and kills, kills Ghostic. The puck. Oh, Ghostic, what are you doing on the sidelines as well? Infamous have cleaned up the other two. They'll now surround Roger. And with the poison connecting, there's no escape for the Kunker as he himself gets surrounded in the tree line. And I wonder if that may be Empire throwing in the tile with plays like that as... It did look... I mean, Rezo didn't even walk out there to yeah. go help them. He just walked... He was like, what, what's going on over there, guys? You're, you're you're committing a lot onto a Night Stalker. It's isn't really that big of a kill. You need to prioritize in defending high ground, not getting kills on the outside of the base. Now it's infamous. This is going to be an easy second set of racks, no doubt about it. Maybe even the full racks being taken. We'll see how much this Invoker can do with the help of Rezo to hold them off. They've got Fortification. They may at least be able to hold on to the mid, but the top melee racks, they're certainly gone. What can they do to hold? Silence out to resolution. The Matthew's playing super well. All the games that I've seen from this actually playing. He's been really one of the standouts for me. I mean, King Tech, of course, he's playing his axe. He's owning, but... Yeah. I, mean, I, I really like the item decision. It's a bit strange, too. Like, he went for drums on the Night Stalker, but it actually worked really well for him. And the pipe, silences overall have been great, and his movement on the map. A couple, you know, maybe a couple deaths he could have avoided, but... Overall, he's had a high impact on this game and all of the games that I've seen. Very, very impressive performance indeed from this game. So especially after such a beatdown in game one. Yeah. Know, knowing that this team can come back from games like that, that's exactly what you need to be able to do as a team at this level of the game. Yeah. Just, just pick yourselves up, come in with something different, and absolutely blow blow the audience away. And we're seeing that here, 22k gold lead for, for Infamous. If this is... Yeah, there's still chance for Empire, but being two melee racks down, it's it's looking to be a similar position the Infamous were in themselves in game one. Yeah, they've even they've even got like super luxury items. Thank you for Infamous. It's Agonims on Disruptor. So now the defu not even the Yules can come off to try to save them out of that at all. They don't even have anything else that really is. There's no like BKBs. There's just the four stabs. But this could be absolutely massive with that on top of that. But yeah, that's a bit of a luxury item. Roger finds Excel, but now it's Infamous on the chase out. They've got the Shadow Bladed King Tekka. Walk into the Roche. That is an Aegis and Cheese Roche, and the lanes are all pushing onto the side of Empire. So, three Roche. Will be pinged out. They do have vision of it, though. They know. They know that it's going on. Can they? I mean, can they actually do anything about it? I mean, they don't have the damage. I, I really don't they, think that they, they can. can't stop him from us from getting away with this rush, surely. Maybe they could have gone for some steel, but no, they're, 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 they're respecting the power of Infamous around this pit, and they're just letting it be as Infamous get themselves the Aegis and the cheese. Decker jumps in, gets the call onto Ghosty. Is there going to be a chance for Ghosty to get out? Nice plays from Maposhka. May allow the puck to escape, and indeed they will. So Maposhka sacrificing his life there for the puck, but it's going to be more... Oh, nice. Oh, Roger, Need a little play there with the X-Play. It, it's not going to be enough, though. They jump forth, they have the lockdown, nice combo from FM, but Tekka, he just pops the BKB, ready to walk it off. Careful Empire, Tekka will jump upon them. Now with two down on Empire, Infamous having the space to clean up this middle racks. Can Empire hold? Benjaz finishing off the melee racks, there's the jump forward, silencing the jug. Oh, Tekka getting a call like that, that's got to seal the deal. Grabs both Rezo and FN indeed. That is the call to seal the deal. GG is called Infamous, grabbing themselves game two here, bringing that, this series, this final series of the day on the stream D. 1-1. Very, very one-sided games in both of them. Yeah. Game one was absolutely an Empire stomp. Game two. Infamous just walked away with it. I think you should say just Tekka on a hero that he's apparently incredibly good at, 11 to 13 the disruptor as we were excited i was excited to see certainly worked out as well yeah the catch was brilliant they really made empire pay heavily i mean miposhka had 14 deaths on the shadow shaman they were that just was, yeah. literally running at them Poor forcing Miposhka. aggression over and over again this team is super comfortable with their viper with their axe they got
probably some of their best heroes that they like to play on. I don't think Empire should feel bad. It was a little bit catching off guards in both games. But in the first game, Infamous getting caught, get on, getting caught off guard from the aggro tri lane. This time, Empire getting caught off guard. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, that's the last series of the day over here. Uh, thank you very much for joining me, Self and Fog. See you tomorrow. For the time being, be sure to head over to those other TI streams in that uh, I imagine are still going on. Still be, still be some doters who happening today. So we will see you tomorrow. Good sleep. Good morning. If it's good morning, we'll see you in a, probably about twelve hours. Bye. Oh.